Last week, Prayer Volcanic Unrest in SVG. I'm going to talk to you about what's been happening. My name is Richard Robertson. I'm a geologist, um, but we part of a large organization. So a lot of the slides that I show is really not me alone that put them together, and therefore there are lots of people involved. Um, who we are? We are. I'm part of the Seismic Research Center. We are the primary source of information on, on geohazards in the region, in the Easter, English speaking Eastern Caribbean. We have a network of instruments and we provide service to the nine territories in the region in terms of volcanic and earthquake hazards primarily, but we also provide information that feeds into the tsunami warning system. The Seismic Research Center has been around for quite a little while, since the 50s, um, way back in colonial times. Um, and that the, 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 um, the map there just shows you some of the, some of the instruments that we have. We collaborate a lot with the French in Martinique and Guadeloupe. In terms of data collection and sharing in Puerto Rico, um, we collaborate with the Puerto Rico Seismic Network and in Venezuela with Fort Vises. Um, so we monitor the peaks and volcanoes throughout East English speaking Eastern Caribbean, and therefore that's why we're involved in St. Vincent. Just so that you know, there are lots of volcanoes in the region. We have at least one volcano in each island, um, and we have had multiple crises in which either the volcano has erupted or else they have had elevated seismicity. So it's not unusual. Just happens that this is one of them that have been pretty active. In fact, prior to Montserrat in 1995, um, I would say St. was the most active volcano in the Eastern Caribbean. Um, apart from it, probably the toss of the kick of Jenny and submarine volcano. So at least the most active um, above land volcano. So that just to tell you that, you know, we're in a region that have lots of volcanoes. It's just that often the volcanoes don't erupt. So they sleep for a long time, but when they're weak, we have to pay attention to them. So what's been happening in the midst? Um, I'm, I'm showing you a map there so that you can get your head around what's happening. That's a map of the upper crater for those who have um, not made the visit to the crater. I would suggest that you make it at some point in your life. It's a fantastic crater. I'm, I'm a geologist and I've seen other mountains and this is one of the most beautiful and most classic in terms of what we call a stratovolcano. So volcano make up, made up of layers. You can see the layers um, in it if you go up in the crater. So the crater prior to now consisted of a 1979 dome, a dome or mass of rock that was emplaced and put in and ejected at the end of the 79 er of eruption. They had an explosive phase and then for three months it grew a dome and that's what was in it as a main thing in the, in the, in the crater. And then we had a number of sort of small lakes. Um, the, the lakes are actually not lakes in the in the in the um, real sense, but what happens is that you have a lot of water in the crater, and what you see in there with the lake is the top is where you have depressions, and you actually see what we call the top of the water table. So the water is all underground, and the only time you see it visible is when you have a, a shallow area, for example. So they're not lakes in the sense that that's the only water in the crater. That's important. There's a lot of water in the crater. A lot of the material is there is loose. A lot of it is material that came out in 79 year explosive phase that then filled in the lake that was there before. And therefore, water, when it falls, you know, if you have up there and there's a thunderstorm, it's really amazing how much water falls in that crater. It just collects there and it stays there. And that's important. Now, the activity that's been happening is in an area called West Southwest. So, this is a picture looking at the crater from the leeward side of the mountain. If you went up the Georgetown side and you sort of reach the edge, this is what you will see. So the activity has been happening on the far western side. You see where in the map they say west, southwest corner. Um, that's where, where, that's where the, the activity has been happening. And that's where the new satellite dome, the new dome, we have to stop calling satellite because it's becoming a dome fully in its own right. Um, it's not really a baby dome, it's getting bigger. So that's where the activity has been happening. Um, and I won't spend too much time on this, but that's just to say that in the crater, there's lots of different domes, um, you know, 79 had a dome, it got destroyed, there's, um, sorry, 71 had a dome, it got destroyed, 79 came up, but Supra has always had dome building eruptions and explosive eruptions, so you, you have a very complex, this is one interpretation of, of sort of a cross-section around Supra along the crater to see what, what deposits you have. Okay, so what's been happening is that normally we have, Supra is an, is an active volcano, which means that, um, you know, it's a live volcano, I should say and potentially it can have eruptions. We always knew that. And for live volcanoes, what happens from time to time is that you have earthquakes. Earthquakes tell us, if nothing else, the people will tell us that too. Earthquakes tell us that this volcano can erupt. 
Um, and if we look at seismicity from, say, this is a map that shows you earthquakes from around 2019 to present. The, the, the peaks there, the sort of the, the black mass tells you um, when you had earthquakes. So you see like in 2019, we had a period when you had a, a day, in, a, a, a few, a few period in July when you had 200, uh, well, 42 earthquakes. Um, and then it goes quiet. So Super has always done that. Since 79, it hasn't really truly been quiet in that it has been totally quiet. It has always had, sometimes you have earthquakes, sometimes you don't. They have periods when you have more earthquakes than not. Usually people don't feel them. The instruments feel them, and that's how we now have earthquakes. So the current period perhaps that we have now, which, which, which ended in the starting of Dome Road on the 27th of December, perhaps could be traced back to November when we had another, you see the, the, the bumps there in that graph. We had a few when we had earthquakes, again. Um, so, I mean, it wasn't clear that it was meant to end in an eruption, you know, because as I said, it's normal for super to have period of, periods of what we call elevated seismicity. And we had one in November. I mean, we, all, we, we would have been talking to Nemo a lot, you know, the super monitoring unit. So we knew what was going on. They would have checked the crater, see if anything was happening and that kind of thing. And, and really things quite, quite numb. Um, until the 27th, um, and, the, and the, um, the, the jump that you see there is really related to the current eruption and the fact that we put in new stations. But on the 27th, well, let's go back a bit before I show you that. But around the, um, I believe it would have been sometime around the weekend of the 27th, um, the first indication we had that something really unusual was happening is that we got information from a satellite which NASA uses to monitor for forest fires throughout the world that there was a hot spot over the volcano. Um, now that hot spot could have meant that there was a forest fire because you have you have you have bush in the volcano, you have trees, you have big trees, you almost have in some areas a, a, a light forest in some parts. Um, so it was possible, but given that we had had seismicity before, even though it had quite done. We thought it sufficient to check it out, so we got onto the super monitoring unit guys, and they were supposed to, I believe, go up to check on it on Monday. I think they ended up going on Tuesday. Um, and, and that's when on Tuesday went up and they verified that something had happened. But even before that, on Monday, I believe, we got reports from people in, in, in Rose Hall that there was, there was some steam in coming from the mountain. There were puffs of steam. Again, the hot spot, puffs of steam, that's kind of unusual. So it made it even more critical that they go up, and they went up on the and the, um, I believe it would have been on the second or third. 27th was a Sunday. No, it was the 27th, 28th, 29th. They would have gone in. And they saw it From looking back at pictures after, and this is a, a, a set of four images that shows you how the dome developed. We realized that the growth started on the 27th when the hotspot was realized, um, sort of, because somebody went up. The picture on the top left hand side is taken by someone who's visiting the crater at the time. They, they saw this bump in the, in the crater. They didn't realize what it was um, until subsequently. That was the genesis. That was the start of magma coming out onto the surface of the Earth. Since then, it's essentially come, become bigger. So on the third, it had gotten a bit bigger, a third of it bigger, and the sixth a bit bigger, and it continues to grow. We've been tracking it with satellites. Well, we've managed two satellites to track it. It's a satellite of changes at the top um, from uh, it's called a Sentinel satellite. You can see the, the dome there on the right picture. It wasn't there on the left so much. Um, also, this is another satellite, um, uh, an INSA, a satellite that, that looks at um, different components. So it, it stripped all the vegetation and it looks at changes in morphology. But you could, you could see the dome on the 2nd of January, um, the little bump there on the left in the crater. And then you see it got, gets a bit bigger on the 13th. So through satellite, through video, through still images, we have been able to track the, the growth of the dome. It's gotten bigger. Um, and this is kind of, I, I believe this picture is taken about three or four days ago. It showed the difference in size between the current new dome, 2021, 2020, 21 dome, and the old dome, looking down at it from the southern. You stand in a person, well, the person's actually an helicopter at this point in time. We're looking at it from the south. Um, in terms of dimensions, it's, it's about, it's about, um, it's about 80, 80 meters high, um, uh, 
um, a couple hundred meters wide. The volume is about, we estimate about 2.5 million cubic meters um, and it's growing. At present, how it seems to be growing is more laterally. There's a lot of space. Remember I showed you that picture earlier on where you saw um, there's a lot of space in the crater. You see there's a lot of empty crater flow. So it's essentially, it's, it's been, it's, it's pushing, it's, it's prevented from going north and south well, by the fact that it's pressing against the 1979 dome and it's pressing against the crater wall and that is causing it to flow laterally, um, sideways essentially, most of them going higher. Um, so that's how it's been growing. Currently, let's see. Sorry, yeah, this is a, right. That's an aerial, that's, a, that's a, an aerial photograph. It's not really a single photograph. It's a, it's a photograph made up from multiple high resolution images. And it shows you kind of how it looked on the 16th of, of January. So it's more stretched out. Initially it started as a, a round sort of classic dome shape, but now it's more elongated. And we'd expect it to go, continue to go in that elongated way, sort of northwest, south, southeast, um, because it's essentially confined by the dome, the pre-existing dome, which is currently here, in this area here, and the crater wall. So it, it can't move um, sort of northeast and southwest anymore. The only way it could really move properly, freely, is northwest and southeast. And that's where it will, will continue. We expect it to continue to, to move with the height being not so, so much increasing more than the spread laterally. The last time we, we looked at it, it was moving. The most active phase was on the northwestern side. Um, and, and so one of the things that we do in terms of monitoring is, is look at it closely. We collect, the, we were able to get support from, from a um, helicopter through funding from, I believe, the British um, with, with coordination by Sedema um, to, to do various things, including sampling the dome, we collect a piece of the rock, we're going to analyze the rock, we look at it in enhanced specimen. It tells us something about where the material is coming from. It could tell us something about how fast the material came up. It could tell us something about how much gas it has in it. One of the main things that drives explosive eruptions really is gas. In fact, one of the main things that drives eruption period is gas and how easily the gas comes out. Looking at the rocks, analyzing the rocks would help us to know that as we collect rocks. Um, we were able to get temperatures when, when the helicopter was here, when we collected the sample. The picture on the left shows you how it looks normally, um, sort of with an ordinary camera. The one on the right shows you what it would look like with an infrared camera. And from that, we could determine sort of, it's very hot. It's not surprising, it's supposed to be hot. The kind of magma that we produce, I would expect in the interior parts, probably would be a thousand, a little bit over a thousand degrees Celsius, um, which is one of the reasons why even as it grows, when hot bits, when, when, when it collapses, as it, how it grows is that it comes out and it, it starts to become over steep, become too steep. So just like a cliff face, as more pushes out, is it's sort of like a conveyor belt. A piece comes out and it adds to the part that was above there. It, get, it gets to the edge and it falls, falls, falls apart. Now, the thing is that, that, that while the, the picture on the left shows you a nice black, it looks fairly benign. It doesn't look too dim well, it looks. It looks black, it looks kind of a bit intimidating. But um, while it looks like that, it's actually very hot. The only problem is when it, bits of it fall off, it, it then means there's hot rock that is moving. And it, what it does is that it, it releases, it, it opens up pieces, bits of, of magma that is underneath the surface. The surface is quite cool, but when it opens up bits that are hotter and has more gas, it then could flow fast and it can actually burn things. So one of the things about these, so what, what, what do you think about domes as they grow is the question of them collapsing. They become very dangerous when they collapse. So one of the, thing, one of the reasons that we're tracking it very closely is because we want to see if and when it gets big enough to start spilling into the surrounding land. As it is now, it's in the crater. Yes, there's a chance it could go to explosive phase, but really if it's confined to the crater, that's kind of good because everything that's happening there, it will burn vegetation, will do collapses, that's fine. It's not harming anybody unless they go to the crater. But once it gets big enough and starts going, it's above the crater wall. When these collapses happen, the collapses will then put material into the surrounding valley. So we want to track when that happens so that we can know long before um, so that you could take action that is necessary. Um, one of the main damages that, one of the main things that's happening now, this is a picture that shows you the damage that's happening to the vegetation. This is a 
photographs from Belmont, which is close to Warsaw. On the western side, if you see, if you know Sufre is normally green, um, all of that is normally green. You see the brown patch that you have there? The brown patch is mainly because of volcanic gases, acidic gases. The Sufre is producing, as I said, mainly water, then salt carbon dioxide, but then various compounds of sulfur, which when they mix with oxygen, with, with, with um, water, they produce dilute acids. So you have hydrogen sulfide, you have, you have hydrogen chloride, then becomes dilute uh, a weak hydrogen hydrochloric acid, that kind of thing. So you have hydrogen fluoride, sulfur dioxide, all of those become dilute acids. So what's happening at the top is that as the gas comes out, it's coming out at the at the bottom at the top there where the dome is just behind the behind the, uh, the crater rim. It gets wafted by the by the breeze. It just goes towards the southwest, which is where the, the local wind is blowing. And it burns essentially burns the vegetation, giving it uh, making it give it creating this acidic burn at the top. We'd expect that to expand as the plume gets closer to the surface to the um, to the rim, because as it all gets bigger, the gas source gets closer to the to the rim. Therefore, the plume and its ability to affect the surroundings sort of become closer to its it becomes more expansive. So that brown area is probably going to expand. It started off right at the top, but it's expanded further down slope. It's going to expand more towards the east. Um, so that burning is one of the prime effects now of the dome, even as it's, as it's, as it's um, erupted. The other thing that is possible is that you could have vegetation damage inside the crater. So one of the things that could happen, bits and pieces could fall off. And as it falls off, as I said, it's hot. It's going to catch fire. We had a big bushfire there. And, and I don't know if people would have heard about when, when we thought it was actually glowing, or people seen it glowing a couple of nights ago weekends last weekend it was actually we think a bush a big bushfire that happened because a collapse happened and it caused the vegetation in the crater a fire so we monitor the volcano one of the things that we've been doing for the last couple of weeks is augment sort of build up the monitoring system this is the current monitoring system continue to be built up when we first came we only had really a station at belmont i was working at the time what had happened is that because we couldn't travel during COVID for the last year a lot of these stations when they went down we weren't able to fix them so basically, they, after a while, the network was really at a poor state just before the eruption started. So we only really had one station in, Bel in Belmont here, and I, we had one at the summit that was still um, working. Uh, but since then, as you see, we now have stations in Belmont. We have two on the mountain, one in Wallabo, one at the, close to the summit. We have one in Georgetown. We have in um, Ovia, in Ovia, Fancy, um, and we plan to have one in Orange Hill. We have one in um, Camden Park, and we have both seismic stations and what we call GPS stations which monitor for changes in shape of the volcano. Um, this is, I, I, I think I'm close to the end, but I'll leave you with this. This is a hazard map that shows you to a large extent what, what could happen from an explosive eruption in the areas that are most at risk. It's based on an explosive eruption about the size, a little bit bigger than 1979. And the red areas are areas that are going to be affected by ash, by flows, because when the ash, when you have explosion, the ash goes up in the air, but it also collapses on itself, producing these things called flows, um, density flows that go down the mountainside very fast, burning things. And they could also be affected by fragments, big fragments of rock. As you move from the red zone to the orange zone, you're going to be affected mainly by ash, heavy, heavy um, deposits of ash. You're on the fringes of the flows. Um, you're probably on the fringes of where you can have big fragments falling in your head. When you get to yellow, it's mainly, it's mainly ash. And when you get to green, sometimes ash. It's possible sometimes when the wind blows. The fact is, the, 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 um, the good thing about the wind direction is that at the local level, at the, I was showing a picture earlier on where you saw the, the, the vegetation burn. At the ground level, at the low level, it goes towards the west. But at the higher level, it goes towards the east. It gets caught up at northeast trace. So it goes off towards towards um, Barbados. In fact, explosive eruption from Sufre produces a lot more ash in Barbados than in some areas in Sibis. So we expect the ash to go across east and west rather than come south, but sometimes it comes south and therefore we have to cater for that. So um, what's, it, what's the future we think in terms of what can happen? Certainly don't can continue to, to grow for an indefinite period. We're not quite sure how long. Um, Sufre has had domes that has, has grown for a short as three months, but that's gone on for as long as a year. Um, 71 dome was a year, this 79 dome was only about three or four months. And saying that 
we have also only been studying a small part of the, of the volcano's history. So we're not quite sure how long Dome Road could go on. But the longer Dome Road goes on, the more the potential of it getting big and big enough to spill over. So there is there hazards associated with it just simply growing and not becoming explosive. The other thing that can happen is that it could simply end, the eruption could end, Dome Road stop, and all activity returns to map. We're all happy that it doesn't affect the business that much, apart from the vegetation, but any damage that has happened so far. But the other thing that can happen is that it can, it can at some point become explosive. You could have an explosive eruption. It could either happen continuating from the effusive stage, or it could be a break, and then you know a couple of months, a couple of years after, it goes explosive. I think from looking at what we have, I think the, the scientific opinion currently is that it's, it's most likely for the dome to continue growing at present. It's probably, next thing that's most likely is probably for it to go to some sort of explosive period. And the least likely is probably for it to stop completely and nothing happens. Um, but but that's, that's the prognosis for the future. I think that's it, right. Okay, so I think I'll, I'll stop sharing my screen. Um, and and if we have any questions, I'll, I'll try yeah. to answer them. Richie, um... Richie Fitz here, Hogan. Sorry, Sandra, if you allow me. Yeah. How are you doing, man? I'm all right. I'm good. I'm good. All right, good. All right. Um, could you could you tell us what is the rate of growth of the dome now compared to say two weeks ago? Right. Um I I believe our we are currently working on a on a recent estimate from the work that we did with the helicopter, but I think the current rate is about still 1.6, 1. 1. 1.6 cubic meters per second. Um, sure. Two weeks ago, when it started, it started quite slow. It started just above one, and it went up to about 2, 2.5, and it came back down to about one, one and a half. If you look at the growth from the beginning of the eruption to now, it has on average been about 1.6, 1.5, 1.6 cubic meters per second. So the overall growth has been about that, um, with, with some slight variation. So, so based based on that reduction in the rate of growth, is it yeah. is it that there the there's less gas emitting and causing the, that reduction in rate? Not not necessarily. Um, okay. Obviously, the gas is still coming out. It's coming out slowly, and the gas is therefore coming out and coming out slowly. Also, all of that is good because it means that you want the gas to be able to come out and also mm -hmm. want to come out and come out quietly and slowly. And you don't want anything to stop any of that from happening. That you know, if you if you stop the gas from coming out, it's a possibility that the gas then gets gets Trapped, trapped yeah. and it gets pressurized and you could go explosive. Um, so that's good. I think the variation is very slight. Generally, overall, the dome has grown slow, slow comparative to other type, even other souffle domes. The 71 dome was growing at what 10, 13 cubic meters per second, something much faster. The 79, same way. So for whatever reason, this one is particularly slow. It may be a, we hope it's a good thing. It may be a good thing. Um, mm. It might mean that it only have a small amount to come out. Um, you know, that it, it doesn't have enough gas below to drive it faster. A number of things is possible. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't look at the, I would, we would look at the overall rate. The overall rate is slow. There are slight variations in it. I think we would look at if the rate suddenly goes up or suddenly stops, you know, sudden marked change. Will be more concerning than it sort of just bouncing around one and a half, two and a half. That's mm. kind of that's comfortable, I think. Yeah. So my last question, my last question with regard to this, some of these signs, is that based on the samples that you have collected, and the rate of growth and and the, the flow of gas, have you been able to come up with a with a closer prediction as to what you think may happen? I know you have three, three scenarios, but have yeah. you been able to use that, those scientific data to come up with anything as to, to guide us as to what you think could possibly happen? Right. So, I mean, I think the jury is still out in terms of analyzing the data in terms of the rocks. It's just preliminary. But what, one of the things that the rocks have shown us, and to a certain extent, is reinforced by the gas. The CO2 that's coming out, um, CO2 is usually associated with systems that things that are coming from deep. Different gases come out of the magma at different levels as they ascend through the crust. Uh, and CO2 is something that comes from deeper down. So there is something that's suggesting something is coming from deeper. The second thing is that the rocks, when you look at it in hand specimen, the rocks look like 
And for want of a better word, they look a bit unhappy. Um, they look like if they were sitting around there. I mean, I can say that when magma is erupt, when volcano is erupt, so when 79 happened, people think that everything that from happened in 79 came out, and that's what we saw. That's how it operates. The magma chamber down there, they still have material left over from 79. And what it looks like from looking at the rocks is that whatever was left over from 79 is sitting there. It was affected by something that came in. It was reheated. So that deeper down and the sort of the, the fact that the, the crystals look unhappy suggests to us that something is coming from deeper down, which, you know, you could then go to the inference that that suggests that um, not so much, not so much whether it's explosive or not, although incrementally you could, you could guess about that. It says that this is something new and this, this, this is not a leftover from 79 and this is a totally new eruption and that it might be driven, even though it looks small, it is connected somehow to some, some of something deeper and therefore the possibility of it going on and possibly going anyway, whether explosive or infusive, is greater say than, you know, if we had not seen that, if we had seen sort of crystals that look very happy and they just ooze out, we would have been comfortable saying, oh, this is just a leftover from 79 and, you know, it has a finite time, it's going to come out and that's it. I think we're less sure about that. I think we're, we're, more, we're more likely to be not surprised if it goes on for a little while and if at some point it gets explosive. But I'm saying that with lots of um, caveats, you know, this whole thing is very uncertain and, and we haven't really looked at it. Have, we have only just simply looked at the rocks and taken the hand lens and, and look at the, 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 the you know, crystals. We need to cut this in section, we need to look at the crystals a little bit more, we need to crush the rock, look at what it comes, consists of, and that will tell us a little bit more. But initially, it's suggesting to us that we, we kind of in a new system here, um, and this is a new eruption, and if you have a new eruption, influx of new material, the potential for gas that would drive explosive, and the potential for it going on is, is different. Yeah, you understand? So it, it's suggesting that it's we can't be comfortable, comforted by, yeah. you know, have to prepare for the worst, kind of, possibly. Yeah.